Amen. So uh, I'm not sure where we're going to go, but I just want to kind of say something before we get started. And uh, you can turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, and uh, we're going to get there in a little bit. Make sure I'm there. Okay, good. All right. So, but before we get started, I'm going to say a little something, then we're going to pray. But I found that in, in throughout my, you know, 20 something years in ministry, I've, I've, I've worked with a lot of ministries, I've preached in a lot of churches, I've seen a lot of things. And one of the things that, that, that I've seen most of all was the church walking in an identity crisis. Mm. Yes. Don't know who they are in Jesus, and they're stretching and reaching for everything that they're trying to grasp hold of, and they've never really grown up in Jesus. they never really come to a place of maturity in the Lord. And those who start to walk and pursue that, that, that line of living, living like Jesus and, and, and speaking like Jesus and, and living you know, in faith, those people are considered radicals and like, you know, like they're crazy or they lost their minds and they're, and they're thinking yeah. outside of the box. You know, we should be thinking outside yes. of the box. God's not in a box. Yes. That's right. And if you're thinking inside of a church box, and you can put a name on it if you want to. There's plenty of names out there to pick. That's right. And what box are you living in? Come on. I'm not in a box, brother. Amen. I'm free from a box. Oh, yeah. 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 But see, some people, you know, they, they don't like it when people walk out of, outside of a box That's because right. it makes them nervous. Yes. Mm. It makes them intimidated. And, and sometimes they think that we're arrogant or they think we're conceited. But you know what? Once you've seen the truth and know it, ain't nothing else going to compare. Come on. And what you know is right, it's right. Amen. And it doesn't matter. Look, watch. My righteousness is none of your concern. Come on. God gave it to me. Yeah. <laughs> you made me righteous. I didn't earn this. Are you yeah. sick? Are you crazy in your mind? I didn't get this because I'm good. Come on. I did it. Be, I, I'm, I'm this way because he's good. Yes. He did this for me. He called me. He qualified me. Yeah, that's right. Man, give me a break, people. Not you, but you know, those watching, of course. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your sweet presence that's in this place. I thank you, Lord. We don't want to disturb or, or violate your holiness, Lord. We want to just remain in your presence, controlled, Lord, by your Spirit. And I thank you, Lord, that you're here. And I thank you, Lord, that you've that you already done what you said you were going to do. You've already broken down strongholds this morning. You've already delivered those that were captive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, as I'm yielded to you this morning, use me. Use this vessel as you so desire. I'm willing. I'm willing to walk with you, Lord. Say what you want to say. I'm fully yielded. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And as we say, Nanalekesh, Nanalekesh. Wanishi Wate, Wanishi Jesus. And in case you want to know what that is, and, and you know how many of you know what amen means? We say amen all the time, but you know what it means? Right? So be it, right? It is so. Well, in, in our language, in the Lenape, we call it nanalekish. That means, so shall it be. Amen. It is so. And that means, like, that's how it is from here on out. That's yes. what it's going to be. And so, and uh, one issue is, thank you, no father. So that is true. Anyway, Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to read a familiar passage of Scripture. It says in verse 11, how many of you know where I'm going with this? Because if you do, let me know because I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And he gave, talking about Jesus, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith. Yes. Notice he said, of the faith. He didn't leave off of the faith. It's not that we would want, and we come in unity. He said, in the unity of the faith. Yes. And of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried 
about yes, yes. with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and, uh, and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make the increase of the body until the, the edifying of itself in love. Do you know that, if you look around this room, do you know that we need one another? Come on. We're all yes, part of one another. That's right. We're connected. And whenever there's a vision or a disunity in the body, the body is unfit. So we have to be joined together. This is something, notice that this wasn't written yesterday. Okay? This was written way back when. And it was a problem then, and it remains a problem now. But he's given us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to do a work until this is fulfilled. Praise God. Is it fulfilled yet? No. No, so everything's working still. And we're, we, and we're headed to a destination. The destination that we're going to is that you grow up into Jesus Christ. That you grow up into him in all things. Yes. How many things? All. Yeah, all things. And, and that means that you're going to look like him. Come on. You're going to talk like him. You're going to act yes. like him. Yes. Yes. Because everything you say and do is going to be... See, watch. When you were created in him, he created you complete. Yes, yes. It's in your book. It's in Colossians. Right. You are complete in him. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, when a baby is born, it's got ten fingers, ten toes, two arms, two legs, and stuff like that, right? So it's a complete human being. But... When was the last time you ever heard of a baby being born? It slaps, and he comes out, it slaps the doctor high five. He says, Here, cut that umbilical cord, man. I am starving for some BK. <laughs> Mama, toss me the keys, I'll be right back. <laughs> that don't happen. That's right. Why? Because they're just a baby. That's right. They have to grow up into being a full grown human being. You understand? Why are you looking? Say yeah. yeah. Amen. I'm not spooky. It's a suit, right? I should be like, I should be like, no more, brother. <laughs> no, no, but just relax. It's okay. So, the thing is that we have to grow up in Him in all things. Right. Grow up. Be a mature believer in Christ. And, and, and quit looking at your neighbor and seeing what they're doing and trying to better them. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Or try to be like them. Come on. If you're going to imitate anybody, imitate the yes. Lord. Amen. You know? Be you. Yes. Be different. Yes. You're made different, so be that way. But be in Christ. Amen. Look like Him. Come on. Like I remember I was coming in this morning, I saw John. I hadn't seen John in a long time. Good to see you, my brother. Right. And I looked at him and I said, wow, that's what Jesus would look like if he was bald. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Serious. But, you know, he's, he looks good like this. Yeah, right. I would not look good both. And that's why God gave me plenty of it. So we don't you do it. So, let me go on about this. So I get rambling on here. Now watch, I'm going to walk I'm gonna walk you through this very carefully. Notice he says that he gave these gifts to the body of Christ. Never look at, never look at the five-fold ministry as something that's special. That's right. That's right. Amen. You cannot be in a five-fold ministry if you're not a disciple of Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. How many of you in here are disciples of Jesus? Yeah. Yes. So a disciple of Jesus Christ is given a responsibility to be an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher. Mm, they, they've been given a responsibility. And so they have this added responsibility, but they're no more, they're no more greater than you are. That's right. They're no more different than you. So don't put them on a the pedestal. Don't idolize them. Don't look at them as being great and highly anointed. You know, people sometimes, you know, I, I appreciate it. And they, you know, they say, well, he's anointed. I've had people come up after altar services and, and come up to shake my hand. And as soon as I reach my hand out and they touch me, they want to fall out. 
I'm like, please don't do that, man. That's silly. Hey, Come on. You know, I'm just a man. Now, if God's working through me and all that, I get it. But sometimes they're just doing that. Come on. They're, yes. And they're yeah. highly emotional. And I get it. I get it. It's like starstruck. They, they've never been in the presence of the Holy Spirit in that, man, in that manner, maybe. And whenever they're there and they think that the man of God is the one, you know, they have this fantasy in their mind that the man of God is, is touching God. No, God's in you. Come on. That's right. That's He's right. touching you. He's That's in right. you. It's not me. I'm not, I'm not the only one in the house. Or Matt's not the only one in the house that has the Spirit of God dwelling in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all have Him if you're born of God. That's right. You, you know? So it's so don't don't ever look up to them. Amen. Now, don't look up to them, but heed and, and beware. You know, test the spirits to see whether they be of God. And if they are, then follow with, listen to what they say. But don't take everything. Literally, uh, like don't 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 hinge your whole life on what every word they say. Come on, make sure that what they say lines up with this. Yeah, to yeah. make sure lines from this. Yeah. Okay, all right. I don't want to. So he said, no, I didn't. Okay. So we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. How many of you know God? Then why did he put that in there? Huh? Because it's a struggle every day. <laughs> See, you think, don't, you don't know everything about God. That's right. Right, right. He knows everything. And to know God is to be intimate with God. Amen. It's to know Him, to commune with Him. Yeah. It's to know Him. Yes. You know, just a while ago while we were doing the, the worship, you know, Matt said, he said, hey man, you don't, you don't need an introduction, brother, because the Lord is moving. You just go on up there. And I'm like, when? You know? <laughs> is it, what? And, and so I have this communication with my worship leader that they look at me, they give me a glance, and, and that's when the Holy Spirit's done with them, and I just walk on up. But I didn't know when. So I don't know, I said, Lord, you know, you're going to have to let me know when you get up there, because I don't want to interrupt what you're doing. Amen. I don't want to just get up there and stop what you're doing, because you, what you're doing is more important than what you're I'm supposed to do. You let me know when to go. So I'm just sitting up there. I'm just worshiping the one like you. And then he says, when she, get, when she looks at you, walk up there. So she looked at me, so I walked up here. <laughs> All right? And then I got up here, and he said, well, I'm not done yet. But I said, why didn't you call me up here? <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, this is, I don't know what to say. He said, well, this time I'm not done. So that's what I did. So I told him he's not done. And then I said, okay, and I said, do it. Can I sit down now? He said, yeah, go back down there. So I gave the microphone back. And I went, yeah. So in case you're wondering, you know, that's how I, that's like, that's how you're supposed to walk. Yes. Yes. And yes. that's not special just because Dustin's special. No, you can do the same thing. That's you're right. supposed to do the same thing. Yes. 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 You're supposed to walk this way. It's not hard. It's, right. you, he did it for you already. Amen. Like, I don't know what you're struggling with if you're struggling. This is for you. I don't know what you're struggling with. Mm. And you want to ask yourself, what am I struggling with? Because this is not who I'm supposed to be. God didn't make me this way. Yeah. He made me like Christ. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to start walking that way. Right. And I'm going to start walking in the Spirit. Just believing that God's speaking to me everywhere I go because His Spirit abides in me. Yes. And if, if I don't keep running on, we might even get to that part a little bit later on. Okay. So... So to, to know, to the knowledge of the Son of God, to know Jesus. You know, it's interesting. He says that, and I think it's First Peter, no, 2 Peter chapter 1. He says that, that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Or through his mighty power. This is based on about how to, of the knowledge of him. Read it, it's in there. Chapter 1, probably, in the first, first, it's in the first chapter. Three or four. Yeah, it's in there. Through the knowledge of him, by his divine power, that's how it was, by his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Yes, yes, that's yeah. right. Wow. So check this out. That means that when we know him, we are walking in the light as he is in the light. Amen. And to know him, you can't know him by just reading about him. You have to spend time with him. Amen. 
And most people will not spend time with him because they have not really anchored their faith or their foundation of their faith in what Christ accomplished for them to have that relationship. And they think because of the way that they've been thinking or the things that they've done in life, it prevents them from entering into the most holy place and being able to commune with their father that he's put his life in them. He's put his life in you. He's called you his son. He called you his daughter. And he's given you 24-7 access to his throne. Right. But you won't approach his throne if you don't think you're worthy. Come on. And though you're not worthy in and of yourself. Don't get me wrong. So you're worthy because he called you worthy. Yeah. Amen. First Corinthians, or in Colossians chapter 1, it says like this. It says that he made peace through the blood of his cross to reconcile us unto himself. Yes. Through his own body, through death, to present us holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. Yes, yes, amen. Think of it. Think about this. Like, he called you holy. But I don't feel holy. Quit feeling. <laughs> Quit. Start believing. Amen. Yes, yes. Start believing. Well, I don't, you know, I, I, I'm just, you know, I, you look at what I did. I've never, I, I've never really walked in his presence. I don't know how to. I don't know what. Quit today. Quit saying that stuff. And just say, Lord, I don't understand, but you said it, so there it is. Yes, amen, amen. No, no, It is so. It is so, yes. So you walk in that. And, you, and when you walk in that truth, then guess what happens? Can I show you how it looks? Would you like me to show you how it looks? Yeah. I'll show you. I, I, I say that I, I, I'm always running. I never have time. You know, sometimes people have so much time on their hands and they say they have no time. But when you have no time and you've got to pray when you're running, and you've got to pray when you're going, and you've got to fellowship with God, you, know, you just do whatever you can. In the grocery store, yes. you know, uh, on, while you're driving, yes. thank God we have you know, Bluetooth now, because people don't think you're crazy. <laughs> Praise the Lord, hallelujah. You know, you know, used to, that's how they looked at you, because, you know, there was no Bluetooth stuff. They're like, who's he talking to? <laughs> and so in the park, you know, sometimes people look at you funny, because you're sitting there talking to nobody. And the, little, and the moms are saying, come on, honey, let's go. <laughs> Take your little children away. It's like a crazy man over there. But I'm going to show you how it looks, okay? You open your Bible. Say that you're going through a, a, a rough day, like you're tired, and you're physically weak, and, 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 and there's so much stuff going on in your life that it's like you just need a break, but you don't have one. So what can you do? Well, you, you open up your Bible for the five minutes that you have, and let's say you open up to Colossians that I just quoted to you, and you go, oh, Lord. He says, for I have delivered you out of darkness and can make you into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Oh, Lord, you took me out of darkness. Oh, God, you're so awesome. I was there, but you took me out and you put me in the kingdom. You qualified me to walk here, Lord. Oh, Lord, you've washed me with the blood of Jesus. You made peace for me, Jesus, through your own blood. The blood that you shed at Calvary for me. You washed me, you cleansed me, and you made me worthy to be called the Son of God. Praise God. <sighs> Lord, I bow to you right now, and I thank you, God, that you've given me a new life. I'm not the old man that I was, but God, you resurrected my dead spirit by putting your spirit in it, and now we walk together as one. God, I am your son, and you are my father. Thank you, Lord, that whatever you said in your word to me, Lord, this word is what I am. Yes. This word is in me. God, you've given me everything I need to walk holy and blameless before you. Yes. In front of men. Yes. yes. That's right. Crazy. What? Crazy. That'll change your perspective. Come on. And then as you're going, as you're going throughout your day, you're just praising God. Somebody does you wrong. Praise the Lord. Why are you saying praise the Lord? Because God is working. Yes. Amen. Yeah, but they just, it doesn't matter what they did. That's right. I'm looking at what he did. <laughs> you know? You know what? It doesn't matter what's going on here. I'm praising God. Yes. It's a different perspective, right? And uh, I don't know why I said that. I thought I had to. Let's go back to chapter 4. Are you all right? Yes, amen. Okay, the question is, am I all right? Yes, good yes. work, brother. Okay. You guys are agree. You said that I'm all right. You guys said, yes, I'm all right. That's the first time I ever had that response. Okay, now watch this here. 
So <clears throat> that you would come to the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, complete man. Don't get confused with the terminology. It's not talking about being perfect, like flawless. He's saying complete yes. or, yes. or full grown, yes. mature. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's the destination. We're to grow up into him to the fullness of Christ. See, you're on your way to look like Jesus. You're on your way to walk like Jesus. And the more on your way you go, the more you're going to look like him. And, and as you begin to look like him, people are going to look at you and think, what's different with you? Yes. See, now watch this. See, some of us, we, we want to live there. Don't, do not say amen to this because you're going you're gonna to wrap yourself up. So, like, how many of you have been to a place like, you know, oh God, I just, you know, right now, Lord, I'm going to start listening to you. But you remember all the stuff you did and how you treated people at, at your workplace or your family or whatever. And you know that if you start trying to live different, they're going to talk about you and say, oh, look, look at him now. Yeah. Oh, he was at Revival and I used all something. Now look at him. Look at him. Oh, he's, I mean, he had this encounter with the Lord. Oh, it's, it's only going to be for a little while. It's, everything's just going to change back the way it was. You know? Oh, it's just, it's just a temporary thing. And you're thinking that same thought in your mind because you think the same thing. Do not shout amen. But I'm telling the truth. You think the same thing. Maybe not to that degree, but you're thinking, well, you know, Lord, every time I've done this, every time i tried, I've always failed. I don't know, Lord, but yes, I want to do it that way, but how, Lord? And then now you're thinking it's impossible. Now you're looking for something different. A different avenue, a different approach. That's law keeping, friend. And that's not grace. That's right. You gotta access his grace to live in his peace, to live in his grace. You gotta get in, you gotta go in. Yes. You can't you can't you can't access grace. You got a key? That's good. <laughs> we, Matt and I were talking earlier, and he said he says the same thing, so I'll say it anyway. You know, I always tell everybody out of Romans chapter five, it talks about, you know, uh, being therefore justified by uh, therefore being justified. And he goes on to the next verse. I'm going to get to the next part. It says, by, by whom also we have access into this grace where we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Yeah. So watch. You have been given a key. You have access to the building. But until you use the key to get in, you have not accessed the building. Amen. You have access but have not accessed. Come on. Yes. Amen. What you have access to. So you're on the outside trying to get in, but as long as you're on the outside, you're going to be in darkness. You're going to be, you're going to be in your own power, in your own strength, and not in the grace of God. Amen. Where you can stand Amen. and rejoice yes. in hope. Amen. Do the door thing. Well, do the door thing? You want me to do the door thing? Do the door. Okay. <laughs> he wants me to do the door thing. Okay, so here it is. The alarm won't go off, right? No. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you have access to the kingdom of God, to his grace. Now, what is grace? Let's just go there. What is grace? A gift. Unmerited favor, right? But you know what? It's really, it's really God's power yes. working yes. on your behalf to make you a son. Amen. Amen. Right? So that you can live this way. So to live that way, you got to go here. He's like, I'm on this side. Okay, Lord, I got access. And you tell everybody, look, I got a key. <laughs> You don't, you, where's your key? You don't have one. I got one. Where's your key? You don't have one. I got one. And the further you go, where's your key? I got one. You don't have one either. You don't have one. No, 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 no. I got the key. <laughs> I got a key. I got a key. You don't have one, but I got a key. Help us. <laughs> and then next thing you know, see, you're living in this world. And you begin to look like the world. Yes, yes. Where's your key? I got a key. You don't have one. Hold on a second. Yeah, a Bud Light. Mm -hmm. Or is your key? Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? <laughs> okay. So then, you have a key, but you never come in. And God's saying, hey, I'm over here. Mm. Grace is this way. I called you to holiness. Mm. You're bearing fruit of the unrighteous. I called you to bear fruit unto holiness. Preach, preach. You have to live here. You can't live here and be holy. Yeah. I called you to be holy. Holiness is on this side. Yes. 
And then some, then, then some of us one day we're here and we go, wait a minute. Why am I living in this pig pit? Come on. When my father yes. is over there and I have a king. Yes. So you get up dirty with all your filth and you come to the door and you unlock it and you come on in to the light. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Wait, I'm not dirty anymore. Oh, Lord, look at me. I'm clean. I'm clean. You guys, you need to come over here. Yes. This is awesome. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen. Was my door illustration better than Matt's? Yes. 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 Uh, anyway. Where was I? <laughs> okay, anyway. Are you to see, look. Complete. Complete, thank you. See, you think I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't. <laughs> but that's a good thing, because if I did, you'd be hearing me, and not the Lord. Right. So, oh yes, here I am. Okay, I got it. Fullness of the statue of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Hmm. And watch this. To and fro by what? Every wind of doctrine. Come on, man. Everybody's teaching, everybody's yes. philosophy, everybody's opinion. Come on. Yes. Come on. Oh, brother, you know what you need to do? Oh, sister, you know what you need to do? Oh, if you did this, you wouldn't be in that state. Mm. And they're telling you everything but what this book says. Yes, come yes. on. You know? <laughs> hey, you wouldn't, you're like Job's friends, you know? You know what? Man, you wouldn't be like that if you wouldn't. Have, you know what? Y'all bet you was a. You've been, you, you've been, you've been, you've been, you've been beating on your wife, haven't you? Mm. you, you or, or everybody thinks you're holy, but Joe, we know. Mm. You know, I say that because there was a time when my wife was pregnant, and she, for nine, for eight months of her pregnancy, was like this bedridden, sick almost. And but we, we had a word from the Lord that our child would be born healthy, and so we stood on that. And it came twice, two occasions that she was hospitalized, and they threatened to terminate the pregnancy. But we, we said no, and we prayed, and God delivered us, and we walked out of the hospital. Praise God. Yeah. Two occasions. And so, <laughs> uh, this, is, this is kind of funny, but my wife, was while she was sick, there was a rumor going around that the reason why nobody saw my wife coming out of the house or at church or anything like that was because I was beating her. <laughs> I kid you not. Right. And then some people that, and you know how you at church sometimes and they got, you know, people that you're not really familiar with or you know who they are, but they never really talk to you. And all of a sudden they show strange interest in you. Is everything all right? Is Come everything, on. How's everything going on? I'm just right. praying for you. Oh, you know, this the Lord bless you. How's your wife? What's going on? And I'm like, good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God's awesome. Oh, okay, I'm just checking because, you know, I just haven't seen her in a while. And the next one comes like, yes, yes, we will be praying for you. I'm like, you, too? Uh, oh, what's wrong? And so finally we found out about it. Oh, and I said, well, are you serious? <laughs> Come on, man. What's wrong with these people? Come on. I, you know, but what are you going to do? And so I just love them after that. You know, but the thing is that that's what happens with people. Yeah. You know, they're tossed to and fro. They're no longer, they're like children. You know, I can tell a, a small child, hey, this is how it is. Mm -hmm. And you and they'll believe it. Right, right. See, somebody will tell you because they think they're spiritual. You might think they're spiritual, and they'll tell you something and, you, and you'll believe it. Come on. Yes. And you'll start putting faith in that. Yes. Yes. Come on. That's right. You know, uh, somebody the other day sent me a thing and said, hey, uh, uh, I, I got this scapula or whatever. Is that what it's called? I don't know what the thing's called. Yeah. The little thing that hangs around these every little yeah, piece scapula. of string. Yeah. Piece of leather with some string on it or whatever. I don't know what it's called. But it said, I got this thing, man. It's brand new. I never used it, but I wanted you to, I was wondering if I could come by the church and you could bless it. <laughs> for, you know, for like protection or something. And I said, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Bring it by and we'll talk about it. <laughs> you know, he never came by. <laughs> so, uh, 
So I don't know what that is. You know, I, I, you know, I don't, why, why would people even begin to think that? Because see, I'm pretty sure he was talking to somebody and says, man, I got this thing. And when I put this thing on, man, they gave me good luck, man. I was in a car accident and I could have died, but I had this thing around my neck. And man, here I am today. Praise God. No, you're praising the devil. Come He's on. Right. Get that. That's yes. right. Preach. Amen. Your faith is just so, just so you know, they also believe that if you die with that on, you go to heaven. Is that right? Yeah. That's even worse than I thought. Yeah. Good thing I didn't bless it. Amen. <laughs> I'd have blessed it all, right? You cursed thing. I cast the devil out of you. <laughs> it's good. You can put it on now. <laughs> but, but see, it's like cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But, but speaking the truth in love, they grow up in all things. He's talking about, this is how it is, but speaking the truth in love, we need to grow up in all things in him. Grew up in all things in him, which is the head, even Christ, who we're all joined together with. Now, I want to turn real quick to John 14, 12. Everybody know John 14, 12? If you don't know John 14, like, like John 14, 15, 16, 17, what joke? The Gospel of John. You need to know the Gospel of John. Come on, brother. But John 14 is a pretty amazing uh part of the gospel of John that Jesus is giving some awesome truth here. And he says, he's talking to Philip. Philip says, show us the Father. He said, man, haven't I been with you so long that you don't know that, that you don't know the Father? If you don't know that I, if you know me, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Don't you know this? And if you don't believe me by the words I'm telling you, why don't you just believe by the works that you see? Because so nobody can do what I'm doing if the Father hadn't sent me or the Father and I aren't one. So if you're not going to believe me, at least believe the works. For it's the Father that doeth the works through me. You see? Then he says this. This is pretty amazing. He says, verse 12, Verily, verily, Jesus speaking, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go into my Father. And if you read a little bit further down, you'll see in verse 16, he says, And I will pray to the Father, and he shall send you another comfort, that he might abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it has seen, has seen him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. And then it says this, For he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Amen. Now watch. He was speaking to his disciples. I'm told this. I said, look, see, there it is. Jesus said, the works that I do, those who believe on him will do the same. No, 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 brother. That's not what he, he was talking to his disciples. No, no. He, he, he said, me. He said, the works that I do, you do also. So, so, Lord, are you saying that I can walk on water? Yeah. Go preach that in the church somewhere. Did I just preach it in the church? Okay. So, go, can I, so you saying I can walk on water? Yes. You mean I can raise the dead? Yes. You mean I can cast out leopards? Yes. You, you, you mean that I can heal the sick? Yes. You mean that any matter of sickness and disease, I can, I can, I can cure it or, or heal it? Yes. See, right now, some of your brains are frying right now. Because you're thinking, that's impossible. Because only God can do those things. See, watch, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm challenging you with something. See, I'm going to test your theology. I'm going to test you right now. If I say, man, I was at the park yesterday, dude, and I cast the devil out, you'd be like, praise God. If I say, I went to the park yesterday and I healed a sick man, you'd have been like, well, brother, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't you that healed him, it was God that healed him through you. But why didn't you tell me that when I said I was cast out of the devil? Come on. It's mm. good. Mm. <laughs> what you don't get about the Holy Spirit being in you now? How did Jesus cast out the demons? How did Jesus heal the sick? How did Jesus walk in the water? How did Jesus do anything he did? As a man, right? As a man like me and you. Yes. <clears throat> but filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. Right. And yielded to the power of God. Yielded to him completely. Yes. 
And when he was yielded, it was the Holy Ghost. It was God through his spirit that did the works. Amen. And that that same spirit be in you, and it should be, if you're born of God, right? That's right. If he dwells in you, should you be able to do the same things Jesus did? Yes. Amen. Yes. And if you don't, you, you, you can look at Mark 16 and say, well, brother, that's not in the original manuscripts that I thought, you know, cast out devils in my name and stuff and so forth. That's not in there. Oh, okay, I got it, but John 14, 12 is. Come on. And that's Jesus speaking, and that's in there. You, and and, and any way you slice it or dice it, it says the same thing. Yeah, but brother, he was talking to his disciples. Okay, I get it. He was talking to his disciples about us. Whosoever will. Because right, yes. he's speaking in the third person singular when he said he that believeth. That's like saying whosoever. Are you alright? Yeah. Okay, good, good. So you can do this, you can do the works too. <coughs> you can. And and it's not oh watch. Now let me let me steer you in the right direction. You don't live to do the works, you live for Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you. You live you live in the spirit. And when you live in the Spirit, you'll do what the Spirit does. That's right. Now, I need you to hurry with me and turn to 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. I'm sorry. No. Chapter 2. Starting in the first verse. It says, My little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, stop. Check it out. My little children, I write these things unto you that you sin not. He says, I'm writing this because I don't want you to sin. That's right. But when you sin, isn't that what it says? Yes. It says, and when you sin? No, it says, yeah. If. if. So that means you don't have to. Come on. And if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. Amen. If you sin, not when you sin. Come on. So get that terminology out of your brain. It's killing you. You say, well, brother, it's not when, it's not if you sin, but when you sin. Liar. It says if you sin, Come not on. when you sin. Come on. I'm going to show you a lot here in a second. If, not when. Come on. Are you all right? Amen. I'm not mad at you, okay? No, I'm good, brother. All right, cool. I got to know, my, I got to know the crowd, man, because you know, I know there's an exit right there, and I'll have to do a fake move and go out like this door and run this way and get out and escape. <laughs> Preach the truth. <laughs> Preach the truth and run from the, run from the evil one. Amen. So if I flee from evil, that means if you see me run, I'm, I'm running from you. <laughs> so, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And I like to go into that, but I don't have the time. And hereby, we, we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Do not read that, that, that verse wrong. Some people read it like this. They said, well, we know him because we keep his commandments. So if you don't keep his commandments, you can't know him. It's not what it says. He says, hereby. See, that hereby means that this is how we're going to know that we know him when we keep his commandments. Amen. Oh, that's good. Not when we follow his rule book, but when you partake of his divine nature, and by nature you live out his yes. commandments. Yes. Praise yes. God. That his word is written on your heart, and what you do is what you do. Yes. That's how you know you know him. Amen. That's so good. Now watch. Where am I at? <laughs> Here I am. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. Watch. He that saith, what? I know him. I know the Lord. Do you know Jesus? Yeah, I know Jesus. And they're living in sin. Do you know the Lord? Yes, I know the Lord. But the one who says, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, and the one who says he knows him, but his life doesn't look like it, then he's a liar. Amen. And the truth is not in him. So if you, if you are still in the pig pen and still living with the pigs and happy and content, but trying to say you know him, you don't know him. Come on. 
But if you're living in the pig pen and you don't want to be in the pig pen, but you think you've got to be there for whatever reason, you probably know him, but you don't know the truth. Come on. Yeah. That's right. That's good. That's good. Okay. That is. But whosoever keepeth his word. <coughs> I thought he was talking about the commandments. Amen. His word. Whoever abides in my word, right. whoever abides in his love, abide in me, and I in you. Yes. You cannot bear any good fruit. You can't bear fruit at all unless you abide in me. That's right. Abide in me, and you'll bear much fruit. You'll be very fruitful. If you don't abide in me, you won't bear any fruit. Yes. And the one who watched, no, I want to, right, watch this. John 15, <coughs> do not ever, do not ever, repeat this, say, I will never. <laughs> I will never do this. You need to know what I'm going to see. Like you, don't be following us. And I trick you. Like, you know, so. uh, that was that was really, that was cool. So anyway, John 15 says this, and he that and, and the branch that's in me that beareth not fruit shall be cut off. Yes, that's right. Watch this. How many of you would be honest? Be honest and lift your hands. Like you think, man, you know, I'm I'm so ashamed that I don't have much fruit. Would you raise your hand? Come on, don't, don't be ashamed. Like everybody, I'm ready. My hand's raised. Man, raise your hand. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> okay? Because we know we can bear more fruit, right? right. That's right. right. See, but sometimes what we get confused is we think that we're the one bearing the fruit. Come we're on. the one that's pushing Preach. out the fruit. Preach. It's not just pushing out the fruit. That's right. It's the Holy Spirit going, boop, 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 boop. Amen. That's right. Whoa, hey, look at this. <laughs> Wow. But here's where people get condemned. They think because of the because of the little fruit they bear, they think that they're going to be cut off. But watch, no fruit is zero fruit. That's right. If you have a fig tree and there's no figs, not even one of the bitty one on the tree, there's no fruit. But if there's one boop, that pops up, even though it's small and the bird comes and takes it, you know, that was fruit. You will not be cut off. But that branch will be pruned that it bears more. Yes. Don't get condemned by that. Don't let the liar lie to you. Don't let anybody say that. Amen. Now watch this. That whosoever keepeth his word in him verily, surely is the love of God perfected. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to be Chippendale. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, you said no. Get out of here. And always loving. And that's not what it's saying. The love of God is what put Jesus on the cross for you. Come on. The love of God is sacrifice. The love of God oh, is the love of God is, is you abiding in him no matter what. Amen. So when, you, when his word abides in you, you'll walk as he walked. You'll walk where he goes. You cannot come after him until you've denied yourself and taken up your cross to follow him. And when you follow him, you'll walk where he goes. And you'll walk like him and you'll talk like him because ain't nobody else going to listen to you. All right? Ain't nobody else going to talk to you. And you ain't listening to nobody else but him. And you're going to walk with him, and you're going to talk with him, and you're going to see what he does, and you're going to think, yes, this is what we do. So there will be the love of God, right, will be perfected in you. Hereby know we that we are in him, and this is how you know that you're in him, and he in you. Isn't that something? But he that saith he abideth in him also ought to himself live. Watch, well, I say I messed it up. He that saith he abided in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. See, it's Peter wrote like this, uh, Paul wrote like this to the Corinthian church. Chapter 2, or 2 Corinthians 4, 20, I think it is, right? He's talking about people that were talking about his ministry and kind of criticizing his ministry and saying, you know, uh, condemning his ministry and saying that it wasn't really of God. 
Paul says, hey, I don't know who these people are talking about this great swollen words and all this other stuff that they've been boasting about. But I'm going to know them when I get there. And I won't know it because of their words. I won't know it because of their, you know, the way that they can preach and teach and, and they can do all that. And they sound so right and sound so holy. I'm going to know it by the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in power. He said the same thing in chapter one, uh, in First Corinthians, in chapter two, right? He did not come there with excellent speech and, and persuasive words of man's wisdom and that kind of thing. He said, "But I came in fear and trembling. I determined to know nothing among them save Christ and crucified. I, all I was going to do is preach Jesus to them and show them Jesus. And I have to. I can't just preach Jesus to them. I got to show Jesus to them. Amen. Right. Right. So it's not just in word. He said, but, "For I came not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God." So that your faith would not be wise. Actually, he says, I came in the, in, the, in the spirit and trembling and that kind of thing. And he says, and, and I preached the, the word. I preached the word to you in power and demonstration of the spirit. So that your faith would not be established on wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Can I tell you some stories about our outreach ministries? Amen. You know, you, we go and there's this guy tatted up, man. Out of prison. Riding on the bicycle. Motorized bicycle. That's a big thing back in in the crowd. I don't know if they have them down here. They got these little bicycles and they put a little engine on and they're all jetting around like this and biker gang dudes. You know. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, they're riding on their bikes, you know, and, and he's riding his bicycle. And I stop him. Now, if you ever happen to go in the street ministry, ministry with me, I, I I'm like shocking all. I'm like, hey, come here. <laughs> you know, he's like, what? And he pulls in, you know, like what what's going on? And I say, hey, man. What's your name? What's you going on? He said, he gives me his name and all that. And I said, listen, now, we got a free lunch. What do you want to drink? And he says, what? I said, we got a free lunch we want to give you. What do you want to drink? Uh, Dr. Pepper. All right. So uh, I said, one lunch and a Dr. Pepper. So they come bring me a little bag lunch with Dr. Pepper and a cook, uh, and the, and the, uh, a free lunch with Dr. Pepper. And then I started talking to him about Jesus. I said, how's it with you? Jesus, man? You know Jesus? He said, no. I said, dude, the kingdom of God has just come to your house today. Praise God. Lord. And I'm going to show you Jesus in the moment here. And I said, you know, this is the thing, man. I don't know where you come from. I don't know where you're, but anything about your life, but let me tell you something. You did not. Well, I said, let me ask you this question. You remember when, like that day that you decided what day you was going to be born and to what parents you, you picked up your parents and stuff. And, and you remember like what year and what country and what, what, what state or you remember you, you remember that, right? No. I said, exactly. So you had no choice in your birth. You had no choice who to whom you were born, where you were born, what time you were born, what year, what day. You had no choice in that matter. That's right. I said, okay, watch. Let me think. I'm going to show you something. I want you to go back a few thousand years. When God first made man, he took some dirt and he made a man. And he, this, there was a lifeless body that just laid there on the earth. And God breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of that man, and that man became a living soul. The breath that the, the breath of life is is what's called the ruach of God. The ruach, the ruach Elohim, I think it's pronounced or something like that. But anyway, it's the breath of God. It's the life of God. It's the spirit of God. And when the spirit of God went into the nostrils of that man, man became a living soul. God's spirit created man's spirit, and when man's spirit entered into that body. A soul was formed. And, and in the spirit of man is the consciousness of God, is the intuition of God, and, the, and it's also your ability to commune with Him. This intimate fellowship with your Creator. That's what you have in your spirit. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And I said, back when, and of course your body is your flesh, your bones, and your blood. I said, but so way back when then, Adam sinned against God. He, he was told not to eat of a certain tree in the middle of the garden called the knowledge of, of good and evil. And when he ate of that tree, he died. Because God told him that the moment he eats of it, he's going to die. So he died. But he didn't fall down dead on the ground, but he died. See, because first of all, when he sinned, he was disconnected from the, from the fellowship with God. He disconnected, he unplugged himself from, from this resource of life called Jesus, or called the Lord, or called the life, or called, called God himself. He disconnected himself from sin, by sin, rather. And then now, 
He's eaten of this poisonous tree that's corrupted his soul. And the soul now takes dominion over his total man. He still has a spirit, but his spirit is no longer seated on the throne of his, of his body, of his total man. The, the spirit is supposed to be the nucleus by which the, the radiance of God, the life of God, and the intuition, the communion, this, this life force of God is supposed to radiate out into your soul and from your soul into your body so that when everybody looks at you, they see the glory of the Lord. Yes, Lord. But that was disconnected, and now his soul is, is radiant in him, and he's become a God unto himself. Mm. And everything he does is corrupted. And you were born after that, man. You were born. You did not have a choice to be born any other kind of way. That's right. You were born under this law of sin and death, the curse of sin and death. Yeah, and Jesus Christ came. The word of God was made flesh to dwell among us so that he in the flesh might put to death the enmity in between us and God. Praise yeah. God. That you might be saved, that you might be redeemed, and God would breathe his spirit back into your dead spirit and raise it from the dead, and you become a son of God. Yes. 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 I said, you believe that? He said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, man, listen, I gave him a track. I said, listen, man, Jesus said, call upon him and you shall be saved. I don't know what you're going on in your life, but you know what? He knows how to talk to you better than I do. Amen. Call upon him. He'll show himself to you. He'll show you the way of salvation. He'll show you. Read that track. Call on God. And I was about to leave, turn from him. And I said, look, I said, what was that? I looked at him. I said, dude, what's going on with your shoulder and your back? He looked at me like, what? I said, your shoulder and your back. Man, what's wrong with you? You know? And not like that, but you know, like, what's going on? And he said, you got in an accident? And it hurts real bad. And my back is messed up and it messed up my leg. I can't move my leg like I want to. I said, is it hurting now? He said, oh, yeah, bad. I said, give me a hand, dude. I gave him, he gave me his hand and I commanded this, this body to be made whole. When you pray for people, do not preach your message. And do not beg God to do what he told you to do. Okay? He said, you go heal the sick. He didn't say for you to ask him to do it. That's right. If it's his will, whatever. No, he died for that man. Give him life, dude. Did I say dude? I'm sorry. <laughs> Give him life. So in Jesus' name, life is to you right now. And I command this pain to go. Now, I want you to up your bicycle and go walk and tell me what's up. He said, I said, go ahead, man. I got it. I'm not going to let your bike fall. Go ahead. Get up and go walk. So he gets off his bicycle. And he starts walking. The moment he gets on his bicycle, he goes. <laughs> he starts walking. Man, that's some blankety blank stuff right there. Man, I'll tell you what. And he's walking back. Man, what the blank? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, man, that's some weird blank. I ain't going to lie to you. I said, dude, it ain't weird. It's Jesus, man. That's Amen. what I'm trying to tell you. Amen. That's why I can do what I'm doing because he lives in me. He wants to live in you. Praise God. Call upon him. And he started beginning to tremble and the tears started coming out of his eyes. I said, do you want this Jesus I'm talking about? I don't want it. Do you want to be free? Do you want to live as a son? Yeah, man. Yeah, I right, do, man. But I don't want to I said, shut up. Don't, don't say no more. Don't blame yourself, man. It's not to blame. It's to call on him to be free, to bring you free. Your past has nothing to do with it. It's your future that he's wanting you to live in. Yeah. And so he cries out to Jesus and gets born again. Hallelujah. He got healed and got born again. Oh the same. And we went a little bit later. And there's another dude that's in prison. We'll be go down there in the streets. There's a lot of people that's in prison, so it's not a common, uncommon thing. So, so this dude got out of prison. He spent most of his life in prison. And then him and his wife are in the front yard, and we're ministering to them. And then all of a sudden, he's like, he's doing all this philosophy stuff, you know. Oh, yeah, I know God, I know God. And I said, dude, do you really know the Lord? You really, you really know the Lord? Yeah. But, but yeah, man, I know, but I said, look, look, just, I don't want to be rude, but I want you to listen to me. Look at me. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you something. And when I started talking to him, see, the reason why I do that is because I got to get their attention. See, because I know something. I'm confident that God is with me. Are you confident that God's with you? Come on, brother. 
I'm confident God is with me that whenever I stand like Jesus did, see, when Jesus went someplace, he said, the guy with the wind of the hand, he didn't say, excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir, sir, where are you? Well, excuse me, sir, um, look, I'm just, you know, I'm kind of like the son of God. <laughs> and nobody knows, okay? So, um, I'm just wondering, you know, what do you want, man? Well, do you want your arm to grow out of what, you know? Yes. Do you? Because, I mean, I could, I could probably do it, you know? <laughs> did he do that? Or did he say, give me your hand? And the dude said, what? Give me your hand. And he stretched it for And what happened? The arm grew out. The, the, what, what about the guy at the, at the, at the pool of uh, Bathsheba? No, I mean not Bathsheba. Did I say Bathsheba? But that, that, <laughs> that, that, that one too. <laughs> There's another story about Bathsheba. That's not the same pool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here he was, and he said, you want to be whole? Yeah, but I ain't got nobody to throw me in the pool when the waters are shaking, you know. <laughs> he could have said, I didn't ask you all that. He could have said, well, you know, okay, okay, I got you, man, but, you know, I was just feeling the presence of the Lord, you know, and I was just thinking, maybe. He said, do you will to be made whole? Do you want to be healed? Yes. Give me a hand. Take, take up that bed and walk. Yeah. And what did the guy do? Took up his bed and walked. Amen. That's how we're supposed to do. Walk even as he walked. You walk in the authority of his name and his kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to ask God, should I do this? Did, did Jesus do it? Yeah. Amen. Moms, you know this. I shouldn't have to tell you to clean up after yourself. You know to clean up after yourself. God shouldn't have to tell you to go help somebody that needs help. Praise God. Right? Show them his love. Okay. I don't mean to flush you. Did I flush you this now? No. Okay, correct me. Yeah. Ah, where am I at even? Oh, yes. He that saith he abided in him ought to walk as he walked. Okay. Now, I'm going to finish up here. Here's the thing. When you walk as Jesus walked, you'll do as he did. And that means that it is by the Spirit of God. Do not, listen to me, do not Try to do the works outside of abiding in Him. Amen. Don't try to live your life, well, oh, I want to do like what, what Matt does. You know, I want to go carry the cross. And, oh, man. Okay, you can carry the cross, but why do you want to carry the cross? Come on. Why do you want to carry that cross? Mm. For your Facebook post? Come on. You want to carry the cross because you want to show God how holy you are, how devoted you are. When the Bible clearly says in, in 2 Peter, I quoted a while ago, right? By his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Do you know what that life and godliness is? That he's given you all things that pertain to you being able to live a totally devoted and sold out life to him. Thank you, and, the, and the ability to express that devotion to the world. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. By his divine power through the knowledge of him. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You want to walk in power and demonstration of the Spirit? You want to walk like Jesus and abide in him? That's simply, you know how you do that? Can we make it so that any simpler than this? Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Mm. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Yes. The next verse, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. Yes, yes. Bounded in him with thanksgiving. Yes. As you've been taught, right? Abounding in it as you've been taught, whatever it is. I can't remember the Abounding therein with thanksgiving. There you go. As you've been taught. Thank Who you. taught you? Mm. Matt? Holy mm -hmm. Or did the Holy Ghost teach you? Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. As you receive Christ Jesus, so walk in him. What does that mean? It means like this. How did you get saved? 
by faith. That's right. Faith in what? Jesus. Faith in the gospel, right? Faith in what Christ accomplished for you. So you have faith that when he died for you, when he gave his life for you, he paid the ransom for your freedom. Yes. He paid the ransom. He took on his own self the curse of sin and death so that you might be free from its power so that you can be justified yes. by your Father, the one who freely justifies all who has faith in his Son. Right. And so you called upon him for your justification. And when, and simultaneously, the moment you got born again, he breathed a breath of life back into yes. your spirit and you got raised from the dead. Yes, yeah. 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 And so that is your foundation. You never turn from it. You never look away from it. You're not ever moved off of that rock. Amen. That's who you are now. Mm -hmm. And now you're to grow. You're to build. You're supposed to grow on that. But you never lose sight. You never walk away from the foundation for which you've been born again. Amen. That foundation of truth which is Jesus Christ, the rock. Amen. The gospel which you heard is now bearing fruit in all the world. Colossians chapter 1. Yes. That you have believed. Amen. And now there's fruit in you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Do not depart from that. Simply say, yes, that's what I am. I have a right, Lord. Hallelujah. I have a right to walk here. I have a right to come and see. I have a right. I'm a son of God. Yes. But I'm a woman. No, you're a son of God. No, I'm a woman. I had a woman the other night. She got touched in the service, and, and then I had a word, and I said, somebody, and I gave the word, and nobody responded. For those of you in the ministry, let me tell you something. When God gives you something, you pray about it, and you show it something, say it. Amen. Amen. Just because nobody, nobody, don't think that, oh, nobody responded, that it wasn't God. No, 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 no. When you hear from God, you know it's God, and I told him that. I said, I know what I said is right, and if nobody responds, it doesn't matter, because I know I heard from God. Amen. Amen. That's good. And you know what happened? At the end of service, he cried out, I'm going to repent because I was supposed to answer the question, but I didn't do it. <laughs> so as I was ministering to her, and I don't mean that in a bad way, because I do the same myself. Right. I've been there so many times, so don't think, if, don't think if you're watching, don't think I'm going to me. Because I've been there myself, and you have been there yourself. That's right. And then you know what came out of her mouth? She said, well, I'm only human. And I said, are you born again? Amen. Yeah, that's so why you're not human. Come on. You're not only human. You're divine. Amen. God has his spirit inside you. Hallelujah. And where God's spirit dwells, it's holy. Amen. Amen. You're not only human. That's right. You're a child of God. Yeah. And Amen. then she got and she said, praise God. Yes, hallelujah. And her whole demeanor changed.